So I was going to watch Thunderball, but MGM Plus doesn't have Thunderball. So of course I went and watched You Only Live Twice, which some people think it's a little controversial now, because essentially Sean Connery does Asian face in it, but that was because he's a spy trying to blend in. And they didn't have a, I don't know. I'm like, yes, it was the 60s. They put fake eye stuff on him and gave him a wig. It isn't like they tried to have him, I don't know. I just was like, it's dated, the film is okay. Overall, yeah, it was okay. There were parts of it that were a little bit goofy. That was one of well, one of them. Another one was the fact that the uh, Japanese spy agency that he was working with had a bunch of ninjas that went in to fight the bad guys with swords. That was a little bit on the weird side. So, I will say that this was the uh, first um, villain who really 100% kept up with Bond to the point where even Bond's like best disguises and everything couldn't get past this guy. And... It was very interesting, and I'm fairly certain I remember him being in additional movies, and that was Blofeld. And I'm not talking about what they did with the Daniel Craig era, because let's forget about the Daniel Craig era, all right? Um, so the uh, main plot of the movie is the bad guys are abducting... Um, you know, spaceships, basically. Uh, you know, space rockets that are being launched by Russia and China, uh, Russia and America to get the Russians and Americans to enter an all-out war. So, it isn't anything involving finances. This is literally just to get two armies to fight each other. So, they launch their rockets out of a, a, a um, volcano near, basically, off the mainland of Japan. But the part of the movie that kind of threw me off is why exactly did James Bond fake his death? Because it really didn't seem to do anything for the film because the bad guy basically knew it was Bond anyways and realized that he faked his death. Um, and of course, Blofeld, uh, well, here's your final big tie to the Austin Powers films, because Blofeld is Dr. Evil, you know, or Dr. No, or yeah, Dr. Evil. Um, so, you know, the Austin Powers films had a couple different references that were thrown between the different movies, but this is the one that 100% inspired the Dr. Evil look, um, including the whole bald guy with a scar over one eye, um, and it's, you know, he, he was a really good villain. Um, the whole cat thing, everything. And, well, he gets away at the end, which I'm pretty sure that he shows up in one of the following movies, but guess what? MGM Plus doesn't have the next two films. So I had to jump right into the Roger Moore era. So I'm, I'm now working on the first Roger Moore film, and I'm sure they don't have all the Roger Moore films in there. So I'm just going to you know keep plugging away at all of these films until the 26th, and at the rate that they don't have them, I might actually finish all the ones they do have. Um, and of course, Sean Connery has a love interest in this film called Aki, but she had so many death flags put on her that it was 100%. I, I was like, yeah, she's going to die. And then he gets another love interest practically immediately afterwards. And, you know, I'm just like, okay. So, yeah, there were certain parts of the film that were okay uh, it was still enjoyable, but it was not the best Sean Connery film of the series. But I didn't hate it. 
And, you know, if you're going to sit there and watch all of them, you, you know, this is definitely one that's not going to be terrible. Um, and parts of the plot, like the, the villain's base was really awesome. That was, you know, a, a lot of good work. And Blofeld is a good villain. Um, I enjoyed him perhaps a little bit more than the previous two. Dr. No was okay, and Goldfinger was pretty good. But that's where a lot of the tropes for Gold Member came from. But um, yeah, uh, all around fun film. And I would say if you're binging all of them to go and check it out.